family for a little bit while the others are gone, OHA family. You've heard the song, Oh, Be Careful Little, what? Hands, feet, eyes. Uh, what you see, what you hear, what you say, what you do, right? You've heard the song, and it's uh, uh, very important. Uh, we, we have a roaring lion who is stalking us. He's not cute and cuddly. They start off this way, but they become this way, right? <laughs> and if you met him, you would think, I don't want to be here right now <laughs> if I was close enough, right? We, the, 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 the Bible says we have a roaring lion seeking whom he may what? Devour. Devour. It, is the devil looking to make friends of you? What is he trying to do? He will, has one goal, and that is to destroy you. He's going down and he knows it. And the only satisfaction and the only revenge he can take upon God is to take you down with him. Because if he takes you down with him, he hurts God. And he has animosity against God. He really doesn't hate you. He only hates God. But he's after to get you, and he will do no stop to no ends to accomplish that feat. Because he can accomplish then only getting even with God. So we have a roaring enemy. And this morning, I want to talk about something that I think is not probably going to be new to you. The Bible talks often about remembering. And Paul says, I, I stir up by way of remembrance in you the things that you should do. And it's not that we don't know it, but often that we forget it and we have to be reminded often. Otherwise, we will fail to do because we fail to remember we have forgetful minds. And so this morning, it's something perhaps that we forget and that I need to be reminded of often because we have this roaring lion. Have you ever had anything stolen? How many have had something stolen that was worth more than $100? Worth more than $200? Worth more than $300? What did you have stolen? A lap, A lap computer laptop? And it was your, yours or your family's? In your room? And it was stolen. What did you have stolen? Pardon? Out of your house? Good. I mean, not good, but <laughs> bad. <laughs> mm. Actually, that was a good thing to steal, probably. You probably didn't need it, right? <laughs> oh, okay. You watched 3 ABN. <clears throat> Um, so, I have, I have a story for you. I have, four, I have four incidences in my life where I had something that was stolen of, of more than just, you know, small things. Uh, what do you want to hear? Do you want to hear about my camera? SLR, like digital back in the day, it was film, but it was a camera that was stolen in Rome. My bicycle that was stolen in Scotland my, um, my, my personal belongings that was stolen out of my car in Atlanta or being held up at gunpoint, and I wasn't stolen, but my parents were stolen, and I was held up at gunpoint too, um, stolen um, my, my mother's purse. I knew you would turn to that one, so I'm not going to tell you that one. You have to choose one of the other three, because I don't have time to tell you that story. The bicycle, the camera, or the, 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 the stuff in my car? Two for the bicycle? Okay, if you want to hear the, okay, you choose one. If you want to hear the camera, raise your hand. Camera stolen in Rome. One, two, three, four, five, six. This is going to be about a tie. How many want the bicycle? One, two, three, four, five. How many want the stuff in Atlanta stolen and stolen in the car? Okay, it looks like the camera won. Okay, so I was touring in Rome. I was by myself, and I was touring through, you know, the Colosseum and, and went to uh, the, 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 the Vatican, and I was there, and, and I wanted to go to Pilate's Staircase. Anyone know what Pilate's Staircase is? 
Pilate's staircase is supposedly the steps that Jesus ascended in Jerusalem when he went up to Pilate's judgment hall, and um, it was miraculously, the tradition goes, transported to Rome, in which now the faithful climb it on their knees, step by step, and say a prayer on every step, earning their way, at least doing penance for sin. And that was where the staircase that that Luther was climbing on his knees when he got halfway up and he heard this voice that said, the just shall live by, and he got up and he left Rome and he started the Reformation. Those were the staircases there. And I wanted to see those. And so I had looked on my map, I was traveling around, I was on a shoestring, so I, I, you know, I, I was riding the buses and you could buy this pass and you have to look in this map and you find where to go. And it was way on the other side of town from where the, uh, where the uh, you know, St. Peter's, uh, is and it's over on the and so you have to catch a bus and I caught a couple different buses and got over there and there's a big mall in front of it right next to it is St. John's Cathedral where John is supposedly buried and all this stuff and it's a huge big cathedral there's cathedrals all over Rome not just St. Peter's but there's like you know 15 20 other cathedrals all over there big churches and so I, this is when they go there and I got to Pilate Staircase which is this separate building and it was closed and it had a sign on it that said it opens at like 11 o'clock and it was like 10 o'clock or something like that in the morning. It was, it was probably about two opens at two and it was like noon because I was, I was hungry. And um, I went in, so I was like, oh, I'm going to miss it. I don't want to I don't have to wait a couple hours, three hours before it opens up, but I didn't want to miss it. And so I went into St. John's Cathedral and looked around. And I think it was the name of it. Anyway, St. John's, whatever the cathedral is right there. And then I came back out and there was this like big open area. It was a plaza, like a park out in front of both the cathedral right next door to where the, uh, the, st- the stairs were. And I was hungry. And so I had fixed um, my sack lunch because I was just eating. I wasn't eating you know, out. I was doing it on about $10 a day traveling through Europe. And so I, wide open, right out in the middle of like the whole world, there was a bench and a park. And I sat down on the bench and I put my backpack down beside me and I picked up my food and I put it on and I was starting to eat my, my lunch. Now I'd take my camera, I took my camera that I was wearing around my neck, you know, big SLR camera, and I took it off and I set it beside me on the bench, right here. And I started eating. There were some kittens that were playing. Vividly in my mind, I have the recollections of it. There was these kittens that were playing not far away. There was this big area where people were kind of walking through. Not a lot of people, but a lot of, but some people were walking through. And, but there was nobody around me. Now, over behind me, about as far away as from here, maybe to the grape vineyard, there were some men, lay, like two men laying on the grass over here, just like sleeping, hanging out. Over here, there was somebody sitting on a bench about as far away as from here, maybe to the front porch. And over here, there were some other people, and then people would walk past in front of me. And these kittens were there, and these cats were playing, and I got fascinated just watching the cats play. And I was watching the cats play, and I noticed that the guy across there was staring at me. He was going like this. And I watched the cat for a while, and I looked over him, and he was still staring at me. And then this person walks past, and they go like this the whole time. They walk past and they're staring at me. And I'm like, yeah, I'm eating my sandwich. I eat my sandwich. I finally get up to go. Where's my camera? I set it right there. It fell off the bench. So I look under the bench. Maybe I didn't put it, maybe I put it in my backpack. I knew I said it there. But when you have things, I mean, your mind starts going all sorts of, what? it couldn't be, it just couldn't be. It has to be here. I must have forgotten, I must have put it. And I looked at my backpack and I looked all over my backpack and I couldn't find it. And I looked on the bench again. What do you think I did? I looked under the bench again. Then I looked at my backpack again. You can't hide a camera. I did that about four times. Because <laughs> your mind is just like, what happened? And then I looked around, and those men back there were gone. In broad daylight, in, the, in, in view of everybody, they had snuck up behind me, stealthily, slowly, in full view 
of people that were watching them do it. Picked it up and left and hightailed it out of there. So I went to a police officer who was standing by there. Well, after I finally figured out what had happened, I went to a police officer and tried to tell him what had happened. There's nothing he could do. I said, I felt, you you know what you feel like when something that is personal, that was just like, is stolen from you? You know what you feel like? You feel like you are violated. Like somebody came into your personal space and they violated you. It's, it was like, suddenly, your, your secure world seems insecure. And we live in a real world where people are out to violate you. And it will happen probably in your life. The chances are probably it will. My wife had, I don't know how it happened. We got a phone call once, and it said um, they were asking about a, a, a charge. Uh, I forget what it was, a, a charge to something on her credit card for a certain amount, huge amount of money for something. And she's like, no, that." It's not my charge. That's not me. And um, come to find out, um, she had had her internet, her identity stolen, and somebody had used her, um, her, her social security number to sign up for a phone and had made over $1,000 worth of calls to Nigeria, and the person was in Hot Springs, and they wanted to know if, you know, and my wife, we had to report, you know, no, no, it's not us. And of course, thankfully, we didn't have to pay it because it was on the credit card and the credit card, you know, they guarantee it. And so, but now she has her identity and we don't know. And so we had to, we had to call and say, no, that we have, well, they couldn't, they couldn't do it away unless they had a police report. So we called up, uh, we, how do we get a police report? We have to contact the police station. So we called Amity and we're like, um, I'd like to report a crime. Okay, what is that? Um, my uh, identity is stolen. Okay, um, hold on, we'll get back with you. <laughs> so they got the police officer, the police officer came to our house and uh, he wrote up a report and we turned in the report and everything was taken care of except that they had to put a lock on all of her um, credit, car, credit and everything just to secure her account and she had her entered her identity stolen. It is a real world in which you and I live in which there are people out to violate you that will harm you. And you know this, but I want to go over some principles by way of remembrance this morning for internet security. Internet security is a real threat. Now, some of you probably know a lot more about this than I do. I'm not by no means an expert. Adon or his father ought to be up here giving you the talk um, because he can probably tell you a lot more, or Moses is if he was here. He could tell you a whole lot more about what some things to do for internet security. But identity theft is a real problem, and it is growing by leaps and bounds. And there are some things that you can do. And by way of remembrance, I want to admonish you, because it's admonished me to try to remember some of the things that are helpful for cyber security. I'm going to go over a few. First of all, um, the internet is not, it's supposed to be a thing, is not a thing. It is an entity. You know what I mean by that? The internet doesn't just, it's not a blob that is sitting there that is inert and you can do something to it. It's something that does something to you. What I mean by that is that every time you log on, it knows who you are, it remembers who you are, and it is learning all about you, and it is feeding back information to you. It is responsive, it's not something that is inert. It's a different beast than ever we've encountered before. Super Bowl happened on Sunday, and I didn't see it, I was gonna, I heard it on NPR actually, I was trying to listen to NPR today, they're voting on Trump's impeachment, and so it was kind of fascinating, I told people in history, Sunday night was the Super Bowl, Monday night was the, um, what was it? The, uh, the State of the Union. Sunday night is the Super Bowl. Monday night, no, Tuesday night was the State of the Union. Today they vote, and Monday night was the Iowa caucus. 
So Monday was the Iowa caucus, like four hitters in the row that everybody's fascinated, they want to know what's happening. We, I don't know, I still haven't heard what happened in Iowa. But um, anyway, the Super Bowl happened on Sunday night, and what do they pay for a 30-second ad? Millions of dollars. Google's advertising on Super Bowl. Does that tell you something? Google's the big advertisement come king, right? <laughs> they can get more advertisements out, but they think that the Super Bowl is important enough they put an ad on Super Bowl. And it was about a memory bank. They say it was the saddest ad in the history of Super Bowl. I didn't watch it. I haven't watched it. I was curious to see it. But it was about this man. I just heard about it. Maybe somebody saw it. I don't know. But it was, uh, it was, it was about this man who was getting Alzheimer's, and he wanted to be remembered. So he was going to record his life so that his wife could remember him. Tear-jerking, and they said it was just the saddest. I mean, every, I, I, I couldn't stop crying, somebody said online about it. And the point was that Google can do this. And on NPR, they were talking about the dangers of how Google knows everything about you. Knows where you've been. Knows what you ate for supper last night. Because everybody posts it. They do, you just give them the information. You put, we put it on Twitter. Look what I had. Where you've been, everything. Almost every aspect of your life is out there. It's not an entity. It is, a, it is a, uh, it's something that responds it's not just a thing. Anything you post online is public record. Anything you post online is public record. It's out there for everybody. And Google collects all of that information and it remembers it. It knows everything you ever bought online. And when you get online to search for something, what pops up? Ads for the things that you bought a year ago. It's... It's a real thing. It goes all the time. Now, what are some basic protections that you and I can do? Now, I'm not an expert, so I just have to go to the experts. So I looked on FBI, FBI's website on cybersecurity and internet safety. <laughs> and some of this, most of this comes from their recommendations. Now, the first thing is, the first basic protection is that of your passwords. Now, what do you do? Um, how do you get password? They suggest that you change online passwords several times a year. I'm not, I'm not there. I have the same one that I've had. Well, no, no, I don't have the same one. It's not true. Online ones, online ones I've changed. Other ones uh, I haven't uh, very often. But several times a year. And it says that you should use a different password for each online account and make them unique and not easily to be, easy to be guessed. I, I've seen some students that had a password of, guess what? Password. Literally. I mean, what is the easiest way of making a difficult password? The problem with making it random or adding t numbers and things that, uh, that, that are hard, that are, that, are, that, are, that are difficult to guess, they're also hard to remember. And they're hard to type. And so you ever had to type your password five times because you just keep miss, missing that one letter somehow? Every time you type it, if somebody's nearby, they have a better chance of finding it because they're watching or could. And so I've heard at least Stephen Williams, he was a computer guy and he's still, he's, he's big and he was here for, and he told me something to me, it just made a lot of sense. He said that, that what makes a, a password difficult is its length. If a password is short, a computer can go through those numbers in random generated sequence and just try all the characters possible in a, in a day and break a, break a password. It'll get there. But, if it, but it becomes exponentially more difficult the longer it is. It's called the traveling salesman problem. It's one of the, you ever, you ever heard of that when it comes to, I don't know what it is. It's, it, it becomes exponentially problem. Yeah? Sure. Um, these days also, if you put your cell phone on the table when you're typing in your password, there are, there's software out there they can use to hack your password because of the vibration on the table and the sound of the keys. Huh. Whoa. So don't keep your cell phone on the table when you're typing your password. Did you hear that? Just, by the way, and how do I know that's true? Because I heard years ago that um, we broke the Soviet encoding device by tunneling in Washington, D.C., by tunneling underneath the Soviet embassy 
and putting listening devices on the bottom underneath the concrete of the floor in the, in the basement of their, where they had their machine, where they typed in their code and it encoded it and then it sent it to Russia. And we could figure out which letters they typed by the sound. <laughs> and then we were able to decode, figure out the code. I heard that years ago, and I, I mean, I don't know if it's true. I just heard that, and I was like, it probably is true. So you, it, every key has a different sound, a different click, a different pressure, and so they could just, they are out there to get you. And they will if they can. So these are some ideas that are just like, ooh, make it long. And somebody told me, well, Stephen told me, just, just, just type your favorite, a long favorite Bible verse. Because if you have the spaces and everything, it becomes so long that a computer will not be able to likely ever guess it. And if you put one like odd character in there that doesn't fit, asterisk or something, then you just suddenly exponentially increased it. So just a long password is one of the safest passwords that you can do. That was a tidbit that came from my information because you have all these weird characters and numbers. You, if it's short, your computer can still go through them all. But if it's long, it becomes exponentially more harder, more difficult to do that. All right, internet. What about internet safety? Um, visiting websites. For me, the, the best security is where do you go on the internet? If you're just searching and browsing the web, you go to these weird websites. It's likely where you're going to get into problems. If you stay with the ones that are like CNN or Facebook or, you know, some these major sites that are secure and generally they have high levels of security. In the upper left-hand corner, it, it, maybe you all help me out with this. There's this little, at least on, on some browsers, there's this little green uh, padlock. Anybody know what that means? This is a secure website. You have an independent connection with it. So if that's there, you have a little bit more confidence in it. If it's not, be careful. Because by visiting these websites, they learn the traffic of the IP address where they come from, and then they start hacking those because they know they're more vulnerable. Just limiting where you go will be hugely a benefit in providing safety. Social, uh, social networking safety, um, you know, what are some things that you should be careful of when it comes to social networking? What should you not do? This is by way of remembrance. Don't put your address on there. Okay, what else? Almost all the things we do. The fact that you went to the theater last night or something, or you watched some, uh, something, or you ate at this restaurant last night. The more information that you put on there, the more people can start stalking you. And is it a real thing that people stalk people on the internet? Bullying and stalking is a real thing. There's lots of things. Computer viruses, um, what downloading things to your computers is, is ex extremely different, d d um, dangerous. Um, be careful where you download from. Stephen Williams told me one other thing that really made sense to me. He said this. He said, if somebody gets your device, I don't care what password or whatever you have on your computer, they can get in it. Do you remember, I don't know, maybe you don't know, when the, they had the shooting out in California and the guy that shot it had an iPhone and they government went to I, Apple and said, we have to get in this iPhone because we need to see what's in it. This is a national security threat. And Apple said, no way. I am not going to compromise. We're not going to give out the information how that does. Not even the government could do it. And somebody else contacted the government and said, don't worry about Apple, just contact me. And they said, oh, we don't need Apple. We, they gave it to the other guy and they got the information they needed off of it. And that was it. Nothing on your computer is secure, even with a large password, because there's some other way always around it if they know enough and have enough motivation to do it. And so what he told me is the only security you can really have is to keep your device with you. If it gets stolen, you can never know for certain that somebody didn't get in on that thing and steal all your information. So the, the best advice that he gave me is that you, you really can't know unless it is with you, because if it's with you, Somebody else doesn't have it. Now, they could, they could hack into it, but if they have it physically, then they can get on it, and then they have everything, right? Easily access, right? And so that was uh, my wife. She was in New York City, and she left her uh, backpack in her car and um, came back, and the backpack was gone. 
I don't know. I asked her, I asked her last night, I was like, did they break the window or did they, how'd they get in it? She doesn't remember how they got in it, but it was gone. But in her backpack was her wallet and was her, um, back, this was before, you know, computers and cell phones, but all her personal identity was stolen. And ever since then, literally, I carry her wallet in my pocket whenever we leave the vehicle or somewhere else. I, I, she, she will not leave any, and it's gotten into me too, not leaving anything that is a personal nature laying around where people keep it with you at all times. We never leave it in my vehicle. I, I, I put the computer in my back. It's about, to me, the computer is valuable from the information that I have on it. It's years of work and service, right? And I, if I lost it, I'd be losing it, even though I have it backed up, et cetera. Anyway, keep it with you is an important thing when it comes to internet security. WhatsApp, I just heard about this from uh, Mr. Potts. He said that WhatsApp has a problem because people have hacked in through WhatsApp onto your computer and then stolen your device, your information, your personal information. Even though you have it passworded, the app that was downloaded had a, had a weakness and it could go in and get information off of anybody's phone or through WhatsApp. Popular device. I do not have WhatsApp. It's not because necessarily I'm afraid of that, but uh, it's a real thing. It's a dangerous thing. Now, what about cyberbullying? Despite the potential damages of cyberbullying, it is alarming, common, alarmingly common among adolescents and teens. According to cyberbullying statistics from this foundation, over half of adolescents and teens have been bullied online. I, should I ask you to raise your hands? <laughs> if you've been bullied online? Bullied. Okay, what is bullying? Um, Online, it's uh, same, the same number engage, about the same number engage in cyberbullying. More than one in three people have experienced cyber threats online. Over 25% of adolescents and teens have been bullied repeatedly through their cell phones and the internet. Well over half of young people tell, don't tell their parents when cyberbullying occurs. Um, so what is cyberbullying? I don't have exactly the definition here, but um, it's, it's, it's threats and attacks, pressure, and demeaning, putting people down, causing things, that, saying things repeatedly. Now, now, it hits home to me because I have a niece who got into a group of friends. And for a, 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 there was some movie, I don't even know what the name of it is, some movie come out and it all had to do with this person that, was, that committed suicide. What was it? 18 Reasons Why? 13, 13 Reasons Why? And they've actually outlawed it, banned it from schools, from watching it as public schools. And it, it, this got into the school where she was at, an Adventist school. And they started pressuring each other to do it. And her parents, when her parents found out about it, they were so alarmed. They pulled her out of the school. They pulled her out of the... Because her friends were texting her. Why haven't you done this? Why haven't you done it? They were like challenging each other. And it was just like sickening for a young person, especially the teenager who is in the midst of trying to figure out life and all the pressures of social interaction and suddenly to have this peer group that says, do this, or you're just blasting you, or you make you feel bad. These are huge pressures for young people, huge pressures. And this is why it is so real and it is so effective because we are, don't have circles like this anymore. We have circles like this. This is our new circle of friends. And the pressure that comes in is real. And so cyberbullying is significant, incredibly significant. How do you guard yourself against it? Uh, here are some safety, internet safety tips. Okay, in terms of social media, remember that once personal inf or, or, or organizational information has been posted on a, so on a social networking site, that information can no longer be considered private. It can be and sometimes is used for criminal purposes. Not only criminal purposes as in the crimes against you, but anything you post can be and will be used against you. Could be in criminal courts if that ever came today, right? And think about your actions when it comes to someday having to stand up for your faith in Christ and obedience to the Sabbath. And you posted things online. Where am I today on the Sabbath? Oh, they could put out a whole list. Here's all your observance of the Sabbath. Are we consistent? Could be. Um, post uh, as little information as possible. Use two, that's... <laughs> And we, do, we, we post all sorts of information. Um, a post a used two-factor factor identification with not only a password, but also a code or a password and a thumbprint. And a lot of services offer that. When you sign on up for your, um, for your sign into your uh, email account, you have to use two sources of like privacy. 
passcodes. And a lot of, you, have to, you can turn it on on your phone, which means you have to use both a, a thumbprint and a, a passcode. So they can't use your dead thumbprint to get in. Make sense? <laughs> they kill you, use your thumb, they get on your personal device and they have all your personal information, etc. Or maybe not even kill you, that you're asleep, or they knock you out or something. And they, I mean, just there's different ways that people have done it over the time. Now, these are extreme nonetheless. They are still real. Um, beware of embedded links. If you click on, uh, if, if clicked on, that may lead to scam websites. When I get an email and it has a link, and even no matter what it says, it says alarm, da -da -da -da, you know, delete. I never click on an email that has a download unless I know where it's coming from or trust the person that, is, that sent it. I get this stuff now and then. It has this link, click here, if da-da-da-da-da-da. And out of curiosity, we're often click. But as soon as you click, what happens? It says it leads to scam websites and malware being downloaded to your computer and mobile device. You'd click on it, and now it starts downloading to your device. You don't even know. You're like, ah, oh, where's it going? It didn't go anywhere. Didn't know. You just gave it permission. And you don't know. Never click on something. Wi-Fi hotspots, if you're in public and you get on a Wi-Fi hotspot, they say this, avoid um, using bank accounts, email, social media accounts while on public Wi-Fi. How many of you do that? I gotta check my email. Oh, I gotta do my Facebook. And you, as soon as you log on, you gave that password over that, pass, over that Wi-Fi that's public, other people standing by just can zap your, can, can collect your, if they know how, or, or that website, they're on the website watching the traffic, they can get your password. Once they do, it's wide open for them. And they say, don't do it. This is from the FBI website. Don't, don't log on those on public accounts. And then VPN. I don't know much about VPN, Vi virtual private network. Moses told me about that last uh, two weeks ago or three weeks ago. I was talking to him about something. He said, well, you need to get a VPN. I was like, what's a VPN? It's a virtual private network that basically could create this little network that somehow when it sends out to information to the network, it has no information about who you are and, and, and your personal identity. They can't trace it somehow. So it goes this way and then it gets there, right? And that's just a way of, you know, every good thing can be created a bad thing and every bad thing, you know, causes us to, re to re react. Virtual, you know, sometimes I think, you know, some people say, some people don't never use a credit card. You know why? Because they say everything you ever bought is ever going to be tracked. And I'm like, okay, so what? I went to Walmart and I bought toilet paper. <gasps> I mean, if I'm doing what I should, do I have to worry about people watching what I did? I mean, so I don't necessarily mind that they know all the stuff I bought because if everything I bought was not a problem, man, he bought organic spinach and he bought peanut butter and he bought popcorn. You know, I mean, it's like, you know, if you're out there buying stuff that people might wonder why you're buying it and what you're going to do with it, then that's one thing. So I never, I, I was like, I don't care what people know what I bought because it, it actually should be a testimony of righteousness. It ought to be if that we're living right, right? When it comes to the internet, I've thought sometimes the same times. Well, if you're going to the places you should do and you're looking and you're searching for things that you should do and, and, that are beneficial, that are, that are tools, then why do you have to worry about? Well, by and large, you probably don't. But there are still people after you to get your information your righteous character to defame or use your righteous character to do bad things because they'll take your information. Here's a good person with a good reputation and a good uh, credit score and I'm going to get his information I'm going to buy this bad stuff. So it's not the same on the internet, maybe as any, even as using credit cards. So there might be a place for using a virtual, I don't know how about it and you could have to learn because I couldn't tell you how to do it because I've never done it. But um, being careful to do some of the things. Backs up, backs up. When's the last time you backed up your digital information? I lost all the information on my, t on my phone, and it was an iPhone. <laughs> no, it wasn't backed up to iCloud. I don't like iCloud, if I could avoid it. They control everything. But at any rate, I lost all the information on my phone because my phone crashed and I couldn't restore it which wasn't too much of a problem because a lot of my stuff was on Google, like, like all the contacts and all that stuff and Gmails, but some of the stuff on there I, uh, that were on the apps that I had, I lost. 
And uh, I hadn't backed it up because, and it's difficult to back an app. You have to do it on iTunes, and I don't like iTunes. And um, Anyway, there's not an easy way of backing up your phone, but your computer. How often did you back it up? Uh, malware. Do you know what ransomware is? Ransomware is a type of malware which restricts access to files or threats or threatens their destruction unless a ransom is paid to a cyber-based criminals. So they get on your computer and suddenly you try to log on and it says, sorry, you can't log on. We had this happen in our account here. We had an old website. Somebody from Czechoslovakia or some Eastern European country hacked in and took control of our website. And when you try to log on, it said you have to pay this fee to get access. That happened to the Washington Hills Academy website a number of years ago. We ditched it, and we started a new one. <laughs> We're not going to pay any ransom. And we just started, we had all the information. It was just, you know, well, take it. Oh, well, it's yours. <laughs> and we started, we, got a, we realized that that platform wasn't secure, and we got a different platform that was more secure, and we have a totally different service now. But nonetheless, this could happen to you, and you get on your computer, and suddenly it says, you can't do a thing. Because somebody has hacked in and they've taken your control of your computer. And unless it's backed up, if it's backed up, you can say, well, that's fine. Or just wipe it clean. We'll start over. As long as the backup was not corrupt, right? So having multiple backups is important. Protecting your computer. Keep the firewall turned on. Make sure your antivirus spyware is up to date. Your, your operating system is current. Be careful that when you download, opening an email attachment from someone you don't know or even forward attachments from people you do know could potentially infect your computer with malicious software. Beware of social media scams. Oh, man, I wish I had time to talk about this. Uh, it's, people have gotten scammed out of all sorts of money. Fundraisers, smartphones, app scams. Um, before you download an app from an unknown source, look at third-party reviews. Some apps, often disguised as games, are offered for free, may be designed to steal your personal information from your device. So you simply download it. Oh, here's a free one. Ha! Download, and then they got free access. It was free for them. Be, be on the lookout for online shopping scams. Scammers will defraud customers by offering too-good-to-be-true deals via publishing emails or advertisements on untrustworthy websites. You'll see these ads that say, you know, these unbelievable emails, this incredible deal on, on like Craigslist. It says, you can buy this car for only $2,000, and it's like a Lexus or something, you know, and um, it's, it's a scam. And I've seen, I've seen many of them, I've, I've, I was like, yeah, that can't be true. And you email them and sure enough, it's not. Um, including offers from brand name merchandise that are extremely low discounts. You may end up paying more of paying for the item, giving away personal information if you even pay for it. And maybe they do get it. Maybe they offer it and they actually sell it to you. But in the process, they got your credit card information. Uh, receive nothing in return except a uh, compromised identity. Don't fall for work from home scams. You may see websites or postings offering work or you can work from the comfort of your home. It's, it, it doesn't, it's, it's always, a, it, it can be a problem. Yes. There's people that all they do is sit there every day and try to figure out how to steal somebody else's money. And they, do, they make enough money at doing that that that's what they can do for their living. And they do it off of us that are gullible. And we're not wise as serpents. We need to be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. I just hope it's a way of stirring up by remembrance that you and I have to be careful what we do and how we act, especially on the internet. Let's, let's kneel for prayer. Father in heaven, we live in a real world with a real roaring lion seeking who may, may devour. He will devour us, and those enemies out there that are enemies of righteousness also are, are in league with the enemy to devour us and destroy us. And I pray that you would help us to be wise as serpents, to be careful what we do, what we say, what we post online, how we live, that our lives might prove to be righteous according to your will and your law and your character. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for watching our assembly here at Watch Thy Hills. We hope you receive precious information. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. Also, tap that notification bell before you go so that you know when we upload the next program. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Links are in the description below. Have a great day, and until next time, be well.